In this video, I'm going to give you the best custom tactics that the pros are currently using in FIFA 23. And how I'm going to do that is by giving you five formations that we're currently using. And there's a brand new one that you definitely haven't seen before. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Well, 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 where do we start with custom tactics? I'll start with a team. This is the team that I use for the E-Champions League, the LAN tournament I literally had last week. So this is fresh from my tournament. I wanted to show you it because this is exactly what I've used. And you'll see these are the custom tactics that I've used as well. So we'll start with my favorite. I think a good place to start is my favorite and the one that I use most right now, which is actually the hard Brexit 442. We've gone back to that. And as you can see, we've run it in the same way that I do usually, which is the 4422. Before I tell you the custom tactics, let me give you a few tips on how you need to play it. Now, these are my tips on how to use the 442 best. So, number one is to use the wingers in build up. A lot of your build up will come from the wide men, the right mid, the left mid, and the fullbacks. That is where this formation works best. Tip number two is to trigger the runs of the strikers to pull their defenders back. Because even if you don't use the through ball, it means you'll have more space to build up in. And tip number three is that the 442 is best used with slightly slower build up. Don't try and rush things too much. Don't play too many passes. It's more about just walking your way up the pitch and then creating space once you get to the box. The tactics for the 442 are as follows. Balanced. 40 width, you know you know how this is, yeah? If you've seen a tactics video before, we're nice and compact in defense. We actually play a bit of a higher depth at 60. It's balanced and direct passing. I'm sure you've seen that 100 times as well. The width is now at 50. So small change of what I told you earlier in the year. Players in the box, six, and then corners and free kicks are two. On a side note, if any of you know what to do from corners, please let me know in the comments because I'm just going short a lot of the time. I haven't really found an effective corner. So if you do know... Uh, please pop it in the comments now. And once you've done that, we'll get on to the instructions. The instructions are as follows. Keeper is on sweeper keeper and comes for crosses. I've had him on that the whole week and it's something a little bit different. To be honest, I don't really notice it that much. Like I did this in ECL because people are always crossing to the back post and sweeper keeper because of the through balls. I haven't noticed that much of a difference. So if you feel more comfortable going balance, balance, then please let me know. Also, when we go into the fullbacks, it's on stay back whilst attacking on both of them. You'll see that Valverde is actually playing right back for me in this team because of the restrictions we were playing under. But stay back whilst attacking on both fullbacks. We have both centre backs on stay back whilst attacking, nothing else. And then on to the wingers. We have come back on defence, get in behind, and get in the box for cross. This is on both the wingers. The only thing I'd recommend that you might want to change. If you don't like them on getting behind, then put them on balanced or come short. I have them on getting behind, so they basically try and pin the defense back a little bit. But sometimes it will feel like your wingers are running away from you too far. So if you're not very good with using R1 to call the player short, then don't have them on getting behind, have them on balance. But if you want to play like me and play the way that I did it, have them on getting behind. Set the midfielders. They are on balanced, stay back whilst tacking and cover center. This is a main staple of every pro team. Anyone that uses center mids, Feels like that is the way everyone's gone for this year. I wouldn't put cut passing lanes on. That is something that you do sometimes see. But I am now in the boat of preferring balance. Do I know why? I don't. I've just used balance quite a lot recently. And it seems to be playing better. Up front, we have the same instructions for both of them. Stay central. And that is it. I don't use getting behind because I don't like them running too far without me meaning to. For me, I like to trigger my strikers myself. So if you don't use that again... If you don't use L1 much, feel free to put them on getting behind. Also, I don't have them on comeback on defense because if I am struggling in a game to defend, I just use the D-pad tactic of striker drop back instead. So I kind of play it by ear, depending on how I'm playing. But I try and stay on basic so I'm a bit more attacking. And obviously, if I am struggling a lot, I will put them on comeback. That was a really long-winded way of saying it. But that is the 4-4-2. Moving on to my second favorite formation and probably everyone's favorite, to be honest. I remember when I last recorded this, Run the Foot Market loved it. And a lot of you loved it in the comments as well. But it's now been demoted to my second favorite. And that is the 4-3-2-1. That is actually in order. 4-3-2-1. Wow. wow. Let's do the tips for this formation. And tip number one is to always use the overlapping fullback. It is a great exit ball. Whenever you're in trouble, you'll find that if you use your right back or your left back on overlap, he is the perfect escape route because sometimes it can get too congested. So if you can use a fullback, you're going to play this formation well. Second tip is that quick X passes will work well. You're going to have a lot of options in the middle of the pitch. So if you can move the ball quickly, 
it will work well. And tip number three is slow build up in your first third and then second and third third be as quick as you like. That is where you need the quick passes. But when it's in your own third, build up nice and slow. And when you get into their half, just freestyle. Now the tactics are what you see on the screen. We have 40 width, balanced 55 depth, balanced direct passing 55 width, and then players in the box for corners two, free kicks two. Only discretion that I would say you could change on this one is the width. Some people like to have it really, really narrow. So they go like 35 width instead. I'm not that guy. I like my players being fairly wide still. So I go up to 55 now. Then we go into the instructions. We have our keeper again on comes for crosses, sweeper keeper. Stay back on both the center backs. Then the right back is on balanced and overlap. The left back is on stay back and overlap. But if you don't feel comfortable using him on overlap, then just put him back to balance and then we'll have the right back. Again, this is at your discretion because you'll see later on as I explain it. You can choose the right back or the left back to be your overlapping one. I'm just more comfortable with my right back doing it. Go into the middle center mid. You have stay back whilst tacking cover center. The right center mid on balanced and then cover wing. The left center mid is on balanced and cover center. Left forward, stay central and get in behind. He's also on comeback on defense. So what we've just done there, yeah, pay attention to this because this is the important part that I always tell you about. Don't know why I'm doing the Rashford whilst I do this, but just focus, yeah? Left forward is on comeback on defense because he is going to play left midfield. Left center mid is on cover center because he is going to play center mid. So is Yaya Toure, my middle center mid. And Ginola is on cover wing because he's going to play right midfield. This is for when I defend. This is how you defend in a 4-4-2, which is why this formation is so good because you can play 4-3-2-1 in attack and then 4-4-2 in defense. Now going on to the right forward, he is on stay central and get in behind. He won't be on comeback on defense because he's going to play up front. He's going to be the right striker in a 4-4-2. And then R9, my striker, middle striker, is on stay central. And he's not on getting behind because I have the right forward and the left forward on getting behind. And my striker is not. Now we're moving on to the brand new formation. I call this one the Tuga special. It is the 3-4-2-1 that Tuga has made very, very prominent in the FIFA 23 scene. And I'm not going to lie to you. These are his custom tactics. They're definitely not mine. And I don't use this formation too often. However, a lot of the pro players currently are. So I feel like it's only right to share it with you. Now here are my tips on how to use the 3-4-2-1. Tip number one is to not drag out any centre-backs. You're going to have three centre-backs instead of two. And I know you're going to get excited. You're going to think, oh, yeah, well, you know, I can just pull out my centre-backs now. There's loads of them. Do not do that because why they love it so much is if they have their three centre-backs, it ends up defending in a back five when the wingers come back. So if you can be disciplined with your centre-backs, you're going to defend well. Tip number two is to use the right mid and the right forward and the left mid and the left forward to create 2v1 overloads. That is why this formation is so good because you get the overloads on the right and the left. You go 2v1 and you pick up some nice pockets of space out wide to then create the chance. And tip number three is to use quick passes once you've got in from out wide because you are going to create an overload again. You're going to have the same thing as a 4-3-2-1 where you've got three forwards in on goal. So quick passes in the final third should work nicely. Now for the tactics, and if you have any questions, probably don't ask me because I have copied these straight from Tugar. Balanced, 40 width, 70 depth. One thing to note with 70 depth is that you are going to have auto offside traps. Your players will defend and they will step up automatically at times. So if you aren't comfortable with this, feel free to reduce your depth to about 65 if you want to do it that way. If you do want auto offside traps, then go up to 70, play around with it and hopefully works well for you. Balance, direct passing, 50 width, six players in the box, three on corners instead of two. Again, I don't know why. And two on the free kicks. Then moving on to the instructions, we have the keeper on nothing, the centre backs on nothing. Now going into centre midfielders, we have stay back whilst tacking and cover centre. Stay back whilst tacking, cover centre. Onto the wingers, these are the wide midfielders, we'll call them. Come back on defence and get in the box for cross. That is on both of them. The wide forward, so the left forward and the right forward, is on nothing. He doesn't actually have anything on these, which is actually very interesting. I would have put getting behind, but you know, I don't play this formation too much, so I don't really have an opinion on it right now. And the striker is actually the one on getting behind, and he's also on stay central. So Tuga's idea behind this will be the striker 
is the one that pins them back and then the left forward and the right forward create space from there. How this formation works is when you defend, the wingers will end up coming in as a back five because they are on comeback on defense and then you'll be able to counter quickly and you'll be able to use the wide midfielders very well. If you create 2v1s with my Dino and Ginola or my Big Al and Cat De Villa that side, that is where you'll get your joy and then working it into the box. My final note on that formation, I don't want to be a shit stirrer, but apparently if you use it, you're a rat. I haven't said that and I've only just passed on the information I've been told, but if you do use the 3 4 2 one, you could be seen as one of them guys. Now, the next formation is actually a good counter to the 3 4 2 one, and it's good to hold out a lead as well. We are talking about the 5 2 one two. Let me give you my tips for this formation. Tip number one is to use the overlapping wing backs. You're going to have a back five. You're going to have wing backs out wide. Use them. They are your friend. Tip number two is to use through balls with the strikers. You're going to have two strikers, and you're also going to have wide midfielders bombing on. So make sure you use through balls because they will be very, very effective. And tip number three is to not drag defenders out of place because if you have your five defenders there, you're going to defend nicely. So that is why we use this formation to hold out a lead. And I'm also using it to counter the 3 4 2 1. Let's dive right in. We have balanced 40 width, 55 depth. Balanced direct passing, 55 width, 4 2 2. What I would say about this is if you want this to see out a lead, you can actually go balance, balance as well. That might work a bit better because your players won't run away from you as much. It'll be easier to keep possession. Going on to instructions, we have keeper on balanced, centre backs on stay back whilst attacking. We have our wing backs on balanced attack only, just on balance. I don't want them to go too far. So I did actually have them at a point of join the attack, but I realised they were too high up and I don't like it. So both on balance there, centre midfielders on stay back and cover centre. That is my Torre and Rude Hullet. The cam, the number 10, is actually on nothing. I used to have this on stay forward, but I don't like it because I want my three centre mids to actually defend, especially when you're holding on to a lead. I need them back a bit further, so I wouldn't recommend it on stay forward anymore. I did experiment it with one point, and I do not like it. Strikers are on drift wide. That is basically to try and get them to get better runs. It's also so they help out the wing backs. If you're running down the wing with the wing backs, you need your strikers close to you. So drift wide is actually very, very key in this formation. You can put comeback on defense as well. As I mentioned earlier, I do use striker drop back D-pad in game. So feel free, whatever one you feel more comfortable with. But the 5-2-1-2 is definitely best used to hold out a lead and to try and counteract the 3 4 2 1 if you're struggling to play with it in a different formation. And the fifth and final formation is the 4 2 4. And as you can probably tell, this is a formation to chase a game. If you're down late in a game, this is the one to use. So let me tell you three tips quickly in the 4 2 4. Basically, play quick at all times is tip number one. Tip number two is to use both sides of the pitch. You're going to attack really, really well down the wing. So make sure you're using both sides to create space. And tip number three is to get it to your forwards as quick as possible. You've got four of them, so please use them because if you dally on the ball with your centre midfielders, you're going to lose it. And let's have a butch at the tactics. We have constant pressure, width at 45, depth at 75, but feel free to put it to 100. Long ball and forward runs because as you can tell, we are going all out. Width at 50 still. That is the way I like to attack when I'm using the 4-4-2 or the 4-2-4. Players in the box now at seven. Corners and free kicks on two each. Now, instruction time. We have come for crosses, sweeper keeper on the keeper. Centre backs, nothing. Right back on join the attack overlap. Left back, join the attack overlap. You can probably tell why by now. Do you know what I mean? We are getting every man and his dog into the box. Centre mids are on balanced and cover centre. This is because you do need some structure. Although we are throwing everything, you do need some structure in your build-up. So don't have these on get forward because you will literally have no players. Everyone's going to be standing up front and you're not going to be able to build up. On to the wingers or the forwards now. The right forward and the left forward on basic defensive support and get in behind, get in the box for cross and aggressive interceptions as well because you're trying to win that ball back. You know how it is. You want to get them in the box as well. And the strikers are on stay central and stay forward, also on aggressive interceptions as well. That's because them four are going to pin the four defenders. They're going to be on them all the time when you're trying to win the ball back. Hopefully, them aggressive interceptions will do well. The only note on aggressive interceptions is that your player is going to lose stamina very, very quickly. So please be prepared. Don't say I didn't warn you. 
Because if you put constant press on too early and you've got aggressive interceptions, they are going to be finished. They are the five custom tactics that the pros are using. They treated me pretty well in the E Champions League and hopefully they do going forward as well. Hope you all enjoy using them. Let me know your favorite in the comments and I will see you all soon. That was an awkward salute. Half Rashford, half salute.